Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, before we actually jump into the content of this video, I just want to wish everybody a very late Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a little bit of an early Happy New Year. It is December 30th, 2018 when I am recording this video, so it's a couple of days before 2019 officially begins and just what a year that we have had on this channel. I'm not really gonna go into too much detail right now because I do wanna do a, you know, a little bit of a separate video talking about 2018 in review, but I just wanna briefly acknowledge and just thank you guys so much for the extremely positive response that we got on the Windows Refund Day video. Now, this was a video that I uploaded just over three weeks ago, and it's already sitting at over 367,000 views, which is just totally amazing. It has become the most popular video on my channel in just three weeks. If you take a look at my second most popular video, which is the homebrew tutorial, it took it over two years to get less views than this video got in three weeks. So this video, I don't know if you would consider it to be like a super viral video, but in the terms of this channel, I would say that this video went somewhat viral, which is pretty awesome. And the only people I have to thank are you guys for coming to this video, watching this one, uh, sharing it around. This actually made it to Reddit a, a, a couple of times, which was super awesome to see. Um, you know, commenting, rating the video, doing what you guys do best, and that's the that, that's basically the only reason that uh, that these videos get views in the first place. So I just want to give a, a huge thank you to you guys once again for this. Um, it seems that you guys like these, you know, computer history type videos, and I'm definitely going to be doing some more of them. Uh, in the year 2019. I have some plans for some really cool ones and kind of like the Windows refund day video They haven't really been done before So uh, stay tuned for that, but in today's video We're going to be talking once again about Windows 10 and just Windows in general like we usually do and What I want to do is talk about a very useful piece of software called wine VDM And if you remember in a video that I did a couple of months ago I want to say I'm not sure when the exact date was that, that I did it But uh, we took a look in that video and I'll have a card come up at the top right of your screen right now If you want to go check it out But we took a look at trying to install Windows 1.0 or not not install but trying to run Windows 1.0, Windows 2.0, and Windows 3.0 programs in Windows 10. And a good amount of those programs actually worked, which was pretty cool to see. The only caveat was we had to use a 32-bit version of Windows 10 because the 64-bit release of Windows 10 does not uh, include the NT VDM or the NT Virtual DOS Machine component, which allows you to run 16-bit uh, programs on that 32-bit installation of Windows, at least by default. There have been some very cool people out there like this uh, OTYA128 person here that has uh, created a piece of software called Wine VDM. Now, this isn't the only piece of software that does this. There are a couple of other ones out there, but we're going to be taking a look at this one in this video just because I found it to be very easy and simple to use. And this program right here actually is a, I don't know if you would say a fork, probably just a translation of a Japanese uh, developed program actually made by the same um, OTY128 guy called OTVDM. And this uh, piece of software here was, as you can see, it's mostly in Japanese. All of the uh, documentation is in Japanese. So he basically took this program and I believe built on top of it to create an English version called Wine VDM. And it's super simple to use, as I said, and as you see once we get into actually you know running some 16-bit programs. It's very simple to use and there's very little setup uh, required. All you need to do is go to this first link that I'm going to have down below and download the latest stable version of Wine VDM. As of this video, that's 0.6.0, but if you're watching this video in the future, you can expect this to change. Then you want to go down to the second link that I have down below, and you want to download the uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 redistributable, 
and you want to make sure that you get the 32-bit version of this redistributable. So when you get to this page, you just want to uh, select your language and click on download, and you want to make sure that you check the x86 version, which is the 32-bit. I tried this with the 64-bit version, and it doesn't work. You need to make sure you have the 32-bit release installed on your system. But uh, that's basically the only two pieces of software that you need, along with whatever 16-bit programs you're trying to run on a 64-bit version of Windows. And in this example, we're gonna be using Windows 10. So this is a fresh install of Windows 10, and I have copied over not only these files that we need here, but I've also copied over some Windows 1.0, 2.0, and Windows 3.0 programs, actually the same ones that I used in the 32-bit release in that video. So what you first wanna do is run the VC Redist x86 file and install. It's super simple to do, super easy. You don't even need to restart your machine. So it's very simple to do. And then you want to extract the folder out of the OTVDM folder right here. And when you do that, you're going to get uh, presented with these files right here. Now, there are a lot of uh, um, you know components in this uh, piece of software. There's even a uh, readme document that kind of shows you how to uh, use the piece of software. But we're only really going to be interested in these two executable files right here, OTVDM and OTVDMW. Now, essentially, the main difference between these two programs is one of them provides a little bit of a graphical interface and the other one actually opens up with a console log of everything that the program is doing. So they both do the same thing, they both allow you to execute 16-bit programs on a 64-bit release of Windows, but you can just kind of choose whatever um, method you think is, is you know, e easier for you to use and just do that. But I'm going to be demonstrating both of them here. So just to show you, let me go ahead and open up our system properties here. And you can see that we are using a 64-bit operating system with a x64 based processor. Now, what happens when we try to run, like let's go into the Windows 1.0 folder here. Let's try to run, let's say calculator, okay? What happens when we try to run calculator by default? Well, this is what happens. It's gonna to try to open up and it'll just come up with this uh, Windows like smart screen type error message where it says, this app can't run on your PC to find a version con or check with the software publisher. So it's just basically saying that it doesn't work. You can try to enable, you know, 16 bit mode. You can try to set the compatibility to Windows 95. It's just not gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demonstrate the sort of graphical way of actually doing this. And that is with the OTVDMW process right here. When you double click on this executable, it's going to come up with a file browser. Let's just wait for it to come up here. So there we go. So it just comes up with a file browser and it asks you to open up a exe file. So let's go ahead and try that same Windows 1 calculator program. So you just have, you know, click on that and click on open. And now what it will do is it will attempt to execute that program and uh, open it up here. Here we go. So you can see that it opens up. This is the Windows 1.0 calculator and it works as you would expect it to. So we can go and do, you know, seven times seven equals 49 uh, minus three equals 46. So it works as you would expect it to. It also opens up in the like Windows Classic theme. So it doesn't, uh, you know, utilize the Windows 10 theme, like, you know, with the modern uh, close, maximize and uh, minimize buttons. There's not even a maximize or a minimize button. The only way to resize this window is to do it from the corners here. So I can, you know, drag it out to be super large if I want to, or I can literally just shrink it all the way down here and actually get rid of the entire, you know, calculator. So Windows 1.0 programs, as you may know, were not able to be run in a separate, like individual window that could overlap with other windows. Now you can do all of the, you know, window overlapping and stuff that you, you know, normally can do now, but back in Windows 1, you can only have an application full screen or in like a split view with one or two, I think up to four applications, but you couldn't have them overlap. So let's go ahead and uh, close out of that. And let's go ahead and try out another program. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, OTVDMW process again. And let's go ahead and try out paint. So let's go ahead and uh, select that, open it up. And here we go. So we got to resize the uh, window again, but can see that I can you know write out whatever I want or uh, draw I guess whatever I want you can see that it, it does open up in the black and white paint because the Windows 1.0 paint version didn't support color 
So we'll go ahead and you have all of your uh, menu options up here. You can change the font size. So let's go ahead and you know type something out here. You can change uh, what font that you're using. You can change the style, palette, options. And we can also save uh, documents. So let's go ahead and try to actually save this document here. It has the uh, the default, and I, I guess the only file path that you can save it to is whatever folder that you executed the program from. So you see that it's actually showing the correct path. So C, you know, da 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 da, da and just kind of skips a whole bunch there. Desktop Win One. That's the folder that we're in. So let me go ahead and try to save this as Art uh, Two. Hit save, and now you see that it has Art Two dot MSP. And now let me go back to this folder here. Hit refresh. And you see that we now have an R2 file, but because it uses the MSP extension, that is actually now a Windows installer patch, which is actually kind of funny. So Windows 10 thinks this is a Windows installer patch, but it's really just a like BMP file. So that's definitely a, like another side effect of Windows file extensions, you know, changing throughout the years. So what we can do is we can go ahead and like, let's say we make a new file and then we can go back and open that same file again. So let me go ahead and open up r2.msp, click open, and there it is. So that's actually kind of funny. I did not think that it was going uh, to do that. So that's that's definitely pretty cool. Um, but we'll go ahead and, and uh, close out of um, Windows 1 Paint here. And now let me go ahead and show you, uh, show you the other method that you can use to open these uh, files. And that is with this plain OTVDM process without the W here. Now when you try to execute this by default, it's just going to uh, open up with a window for a split second and then immediately close it. And that's because that the way that you execute programs with this here is actually by dragging and dropping them. So for this example, let me go ahead and use a Windows 3.0 program just, you know, for fun. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and let's try to open up the Windows 3.0 clock program. So let's go ahead and just drag this uh, whole executable here and we wanna drop it on top of OTVDM. So you see it says they're open with OTVDM. When we do that, it will open up a console window with the version information, and then it will actually open up the program itself. And essentially what this console window does is it will give you a log of everything that the program has done while you had this program executed. So it will spit out any warnings, any like error messages, that sort of thing. But uh, here we have the Windows 3.0 clock and this does have a maximize and a minimize button. So we can go ahead and do that, you know, resize it if we want to. Something that's also pretty cool is that you can see in like the taskbar here, it actually has its own icon and it has its own title. If you remember, and I'll try to like uh, splice in a little clip here of the uh, previous video, the uh, running Windows 1.0 apps on 32-bit Windows, when you would execute programs, they wouldn't show up like this. They would all show up um, as being individual windows of the NTVDM process. So just to give you a, like a brief example, let's go ahead and um, open up uh, Notepad here. So let's go ahead and open up Notepad with uh, NTVDM. So you see that the notepad and the clock have two separate uh, program icons in the taskbar as if they are two separate programs. Well, previously in the 32-bit version of Windows, these two icons would show up as different windows under the NTVDM process. So this uh, program is actually doing it a bit differently where it's actually treating each of these programs as different applications even though they're essentially running under this OTVDM process. Because see, when you open up uh, Task Manager here, you see that the only process that is running is the OTVDM process. And inside of that, we are running, you know, Notepad and Clock. So we have confirmed that, you know, these a couple programs that I tried out worked and I and I wouldn't see why that most of these other ones, I mean, you, you might find a couple of them that don't work, but uh, I, I would assume that most of them would work normally. Now let's go ahead and try out our old friend Calmira XP. Uh, we have taken a look at both Calmira 95 and Calmira XP before, which basically uh, provide a Windows 95 and a Windows XP interface to Windows 3.1. This is again a 16-bit application. Let's go ahead and try to open up OTVDM and uh, drag and drop it on top of here. And it, and it will come up with, you know, and say this will install Calmira XP. Well, I mean, just to show you what it does when you try to like execute it normally, it just comes up with the same error saying the specified path does not exist. 
So let's try to install Camera XP with OTVDM. We'll go ahead and click on next. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on, we'll uh, accept the agreement. We will install it to, now this is uh, something else that's kind of interesting that uh, OTVDM does, is it actually creates its own Windows folder in here. So you can see that it wants to, by default, install it to C users, Michael desktop, then inside of the OTVDM folder, then the Windows folder, and then Calmir. So it wants to install the program inside of this you know, separate folder here that kind of keeps it separate from your uh, regular Windows folder, which is pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on Next. We'll uh, choose Install. So now it is uh, coming up with this uh, message saying that the this existing file is newer than the one setup is in trying to install. Let's go ahead and just uh, hit No. Click No. No. So that we don't overwrite anything. And uh, the process will finish up here. It comes up with this DDE connect failed code 16394. Let's just, okay. So see, you, you are going to experience a few problems. Error creating INI entry in, in, in file. We'll hit ignore. And we don't want to view the readme file. So it did install, but there were some error messages as you can see. Let's see if it will actually work. So we've got the Camera folder here. Let's go ahead and try to execute Calmira. So once again, when we try to do it by default, it's it's just not going to work. Let's try to open up the uh, like file browsing one this time. Let's go into OTVDM, Windows, Calmira. Let's try to run Calmira.exe. There we go. Calmira XP is starting. So it will come up. I mean, if you didn't see uh, my you know Camera video, this is what that uh, Camera XP looks like. Yeah, so it does work. It's actually pretty cool to be honest that we're able to. I mean, this is uh, you know kind of funny. We've got like two separate taskbars here. Like I said, you probably are going to be able to find programs that don't work 100% the way that they should, or just don't even work at all with this uh, piece of software. But if you were in whatever case and, and you just had to run a 16-bit program on a 64-bit OS for whatever reason, this might be a very simple, easy way for you to go ahead and do it. So it's, there you have it. That is essentially going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload new videos, which I do every single week on this channel. And be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this program. Have you ever used this before? I know that there were a couple of you guys who had uh, commented and asked me to take a look at this program. So there's definitely some of you guys who have used who have used this before. But um, be sure to, you know, let me know what you think of this. I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you so much for watching and for your support over this last year in 2018. And I will see you next year in the next video.